Hi everyone and welcome to, well, you'll see. My name is Nikolai and today I got something new for you. Over the last couple of weeks I developed the idea, or the urge rather, to live stream coding sessions. You know, I experiment with a lot of new stuff and I thought it would be more fun if you and I could do this together. Thing is, I'm in Vietnam right now and I have a crappy internet connection and I don't have the equipment to live stream with this mic or with this camera. All I have are this mic and this camera. And frankly, they both suck. So the reasonable thing to do would have been to wait for a few weeks, get back home, get the proper equipment and start with high quality you used to. But I just couldn't. I just, I was, I had the urge to do this and so I just did it. Last Friday at 700 UTC, I went online and spent three hours researching Java 12 features and experimenting with a few of those. And even though there were just a couple of, like a handful of people there, we had such a blast. It was so much fun, particularly when we started researching stuff together. People helped me out when I get stuck and they dropped their knowledge into the chat. That was really awesome. So what follows is the uncut version of that stream with all its hitches and quirks and believe me there were a few of those. Give it a go and let me know what you think about it and if you like what you see head over to twitch.tv slash and follow me there so you get notifications when I start a stream or follow me on Twitter under NipaFX and we'll announce the session in advance. But with all of that said, let's dive right in. Hey everyone, I guess we're live. At least we should be. Holy. So let's see whether anybody's there. <clears throat> ha! Hi, Surfman. Great you made it. Look, I'm just two minutes late. Or three, maybe. That's almost nothing. I think being, fashion being late is fashionable for streamers, I heard. I do have a good excuse. Ha! Ah, more people, hi! Adrian, nice to see you. Ha! Huh. That's weird. So I'm, I'm looking at my own Twitch stream right now. And I can't see the number of viewers. Which I would have expected. But never mind. I'm sure there's a reason for that. Um, so, yes. Ha, you got a beer. I didn't get one yet. I'll change that now. There you go. Then happy weekend. Tiger beer, by the way. So beer of choice here in Vietnam. Look, I made it beautiful for you. I put up flowers. I really, I really hope this thing is gonna hold the flowers. I'm not entirely sure. Cheers. Okay. So, um, I've put a shirt on. Yes, of course. I was outside right now. I usually wear shirts when I'm outside. Okay, let's let's uh, let me see something else. This is I'm looking at the stream while I'm talking to you. Just somewhat confusing. I'm looking at the stream while I'm talking to you. Somewhat confusing. Looking at the stream while I'm talking to you. Okay. Um, one thing I want to do is. Uh, What's my, where did my soundscape go that I want to play? The rain soundscape. Hmm. Okay. Stuff might start flickering. Never mind. I'll fix that in a second. I simply, uh, first I have to grab this thing here. So, okay, I just saw that there's a, huh, seven people apparently, seven people watching. Let me send a tweet that we're live and then I'm going to tell you where I just was and then we're going to get into it. Um, because I've just, I've, I've just come back from the cinema, I've just watched um, Alita Battle Angel, which I think is an, is an okay, uh, I think is an okay movie. Um, but I like the imagery. I just, I'm a big fan of all the cyberpunk stuff. 
and uh, it was just a lot of fun to watch. Oh, I can't get the soundscape to work. Huh, that's weird. Where did my sound go? See, this is the first stream. I already, yeah, I already told all of you people, right? This is the first time I'm doing this. There are bound to be mistakes and horrible things happening. If they do, please tell me. Let me know in the chat or wherever you're going to watch this. I'm going to upload this to YouTube most likely. Um, so if you, if you watch this on YouTube, leave a comment. I'm happy to improve. Uh, this is the first try, so to speak. Hmm. In the chat or wherever you want. Um, okay, I, I can't find the can't find the look. This is I'm gonna post it into chat. This is what I'm what I'm usually listening to. Well, not usually, what I'm occasionally listening to. Uh, I get like one FPS. The is breaking up. Looks like a bandwidth issue. I get like one FPS and sometimes the sound is breaking up. That's bad. We don't want that. Okay, just, I think I was streaming at the same time. I just stopped doing that. I mean, I, I, was, I was watching my own stream at the same time. I just stopped doing that. Let me close this browser window. And this browser window, too many browser windows open apparently. Um, yeah, let me know whether it's better. I hope it's better now. Okay, I'm just writing a small tweet and then we get going. Um, we're live at twitch.tv slash It's massively improving. Oh yeah, I think I was like, I had, <laughs> I'm stupid like that. Uh, so I have several browsers open, right? I have like two desktops and I have Firefox open for my daily work and occasionally Chrome for just some experiments. And uh, so I had in Firefox and in Chrome, both of them, I watched, looked at my own stream. So I guess that wasn't really helping my bandwidth problems here. Chat has a 15 second lag before you see it. Um, yeah, it depends. So, um, okay, so first of all, I, have, I see the chat twice. Uh, I, see the, I see the chat in its own chat window and that of course I see immediately. But I also include the chat in the video, right? On the right hand side there. And then the video has a delay. Uh, and that delay is usually between 15 and 20 seconds, but Twitch introduced a low latency uh, mode, which I, as a, um, which I can activate. And if I do activate it, then it, Twitch will activate it for the consumers as well, given a couple of conditions. Uh, your bandwidth has to, be, has to be large enough, I guess mine as well maybe. And you have to have the right software. I think they said they only support Chrome and a couple other browsers on, on, laptop, or on PCs. I don't know, I didn't look at the details. Um, and if all of those are true, then you get like a low latency stream and that's like a couple of seconds only. And I did that earlier today because I checked. So I had a delay for my own, uh, for my own stream, right? I watched it in, my, in a browser for like four seconds. Right, but never mind. Um, now, let's get going. So what I would like to do, as I said, um, we're going to experiment with Java 12. I uh, checked out uh, the bit feature in Java 12, a switch statement, and I only looked into that. Uh, we can do that later if you're interested in that, but uh, there's also a video on YouTube uh, which explains that um, in detail. And I also wrote a blog post about that, so we don't have to repeat that here, but we can if you want. Uh, what's more interesting for me right now is figuring out the rest. What else is new? What else is there in, um, in Java 12 that would be, might be worth looking at? And uh, to do that, um, I invite you to come along and code along if you want to. So if you're not just, I mean, if you're busy watching and drinking beer, that's fine with me. But you know, if you've got an IDE open, want to experiment with it, and you can do that too. So for that, um, let's go to, let's first go to github.com slash colfx.mod. 
my, minus org slash I want to say Java X demo maybe no that should be somewhere like something like that Java X demo mm. There you go. What did I type? Oh, it's demo Java X. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I turned those around. So it's demo Java X. Um, this is a repository that I have um, imported into my IDE, and that can you can use it as well. Um, if you want to code along, you just uh, clone this, uh, and then you can use it with Maven. There are a couple of uh, combi on command line scripts that work on Unix-based systems, so you can run stuff that way, and you can just import it into your IDE. And then you can code along if you want to. So my, I would start based on this on this repository. And my goal is the long-term goal not for tonight, but the lot of for this after this evening for you tonight for me. Um, my long-term goal is uh, to do the, the experiments that we do will show up in here eventually, um, but maybe not right now. So you can do that if you can if you clone this, then you got the code. But that's not strictly necessary. What is strictly necessary is of course to download Java 12, which is Easy as pi, jdk.java.net slash 12. There you go. I already did this. I don't want to do it again because it takes some time right here to download that. Um, what's pretty cool is that these are only archives, right? So you don't have to install anything. Even on Windows, you can just unpack it and then start using it, which is what I do as well. So um, what I do then is personally, I have the script somewhere in op. I put a script. Uh, it's called update java sh um, which I use like this um, oh, I don't want to type it out never mind so I just update java sh 12 this is the tar file that you want to unpack and this is the folder where you put it in and then I end up with something like this jdk 12 b build 32 this is the one we're going to experiment with I downloaded yesterday and then I have uh, symbol from jdk 12 there and to use it on the command, and I type Java 12, dot version, for example, and then I get uh, the version Java 12 version that's running. So if you download it and unzip it, um, this way you can use it on a command line. More likely, you want to use it in. Um, you want to use it. Oh, you can close. You want to use it in your IDE, um, and there you can after you. In after you um, imported it, uh, you can then, where are the settings? There we go, there are the settings. Of course, you go to project, SDK, new, JDK, and here you can go to the path in the IntelliJ, and it's something similar in Eclipse, of course. You just pick the JDK that you want to use, and when you're done with all that, uh, then ideally you get a project like this one, although I have to say, which is kind of annoying, I get compile errors. Not they are not compile errors, but the uh, but the IntelliJ uh, source code analyzer gives me compile errors because it says switch expressions are not supported language language twelve. And then I go okay, then set it to twelve preview, please. And then nothing happens. I guess it's some misconfiguration on my end. Um, so that's that's a little bit weird. I can't get rid of it right now. I don't have to though. Just comment out. Okay, so this is basically. Um, um, this is basically how to get started if you want to come, if you want to code along. And uh, then the next thing is, now I want to look at Java 12. And there is um, Gunnar Morlin created a tool that he then um, gave to adopt OpenJDK. Adopt OpenJDK is a nice um, project, basically centered around uh, helping to promote the use of the JDK, but what they will be most more famous for is that they will be providing um, builds of OpenJDK on their build farm. But they also have um, JDK version diff, maybe. I don't know. We'll find it, I'm sure. JDK API diff. Right, here we go. So what this tool does, it downloads various versions of the JDK and then creates a diff view, basically, where you can see what's new. And I use that as, a, as one guide to what to experiment with. So let's have a look at the comparison of uh, this one, uh, 11.01 with 12.EA27. So this compares mm, a most recent 11 build with some fairly recent JDK 12 build. Um, 
And the result of this tool is an HTML file like this. And later we're going to scroll up, up over this list um, and have a look at that. The other source is, ooh, and now I'm not sure what the URL for that could be. There is a Java. Is there a jet for Java 12? I think. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. So under the um, of the OpenJDK projects uh, sub site, there is uh, one for JDK 12. And this uh, tells you a lot of things. Uh, I can recommend looking at this occasionally. Uh, there's also one for 13 where you can see, for example, in 13 you can see, well, not that much yet. Um, not for 12. You can see the current status. Well, we are ramped on phase two. This one, um, hmm, it should be in release candidate phase, I think. When are we not? I guess this, I guess we are, and this is just not updated. These are the features that we can look at. So these are the two sources. These are all the small stuff. It's about the big stuff is listed here, and it's also it also shows up in the diff here. And but this diff also includes the small stuff, and I want to look at both. And what my goal is here. Uh, is to start out by cr to create a list of well, ah yeah there we go um, of Java 12 changes and I want to put them into three categories I want to put them into a language so which syntax is legal that used to be illegal um, API changes or let's say APIs some are new APIs and some are um, updated APIs. And then, generally speaking, there are some JVM changes. Some of them are about performance, those are particularly interesting. Well, well maybe not particularly interesting, but I usually point them out. Um, so I want to collect information and put them into these categories. That's going to be the first step. And the second is going to be, uh, let's have a look at some of these. So um, let's do that then. Let's start. Let's start here. Let's have a look at JDK 12. Which jabs are there? So, Shenandoah, low pause um, time, garbage collector. Yeah. So, um, Alexei Shipilev left Oracle and went to Red Hat, where he's working on Shenandoah. And with this jab, the code is available, or the garbage collector rather, is available in the JDK. So you can activate it um, and use it that way, which I'm, I, I don't, I don't know enough about garbage collection to really be able to, uh, to say much about this. I'm also not able to type that out. I'm going to copy paste it and put it under um, Shenandoah GC. That's Jeff 189. Okay. Microbenchmark suit. I think I read about this. Is it the one that I think it is? At a basic suit of back Oh, yeah. Okay, that's not that's not ended us. That's uh, purely internal, as far as I know. Um, the goal is that uh, the JMH, the Java Micro Benchmarking Harness. Yeah, I think I got that right. Um, that one. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, that one is used internally within the JDK, and. Uh, this one makes uh, make uh, adds some benchmarks and makes them uh, available easier, so that um, it's easier to compare changes in the JDK cross branches and see whether something led to an improvement or not. Um, and I don't think there's a big point in looking into that. Switch expressions, of course, are the big thing of Java 12. As I said, if you want, we can look into that later. I think that's the only language change that I'm aware of. Um, that's that one. JVM constants RP. Okay, so this is something within the JDK. Uh, sorry, within the JVM. Uh, if you ever heard about invoke dynamic, then this is somehow similar, I guess. I think it's called invoke constant and has stuff to do with the constant pool. And that's pretty much all I know. If you're interested, we can, I can uh, look for that later. There's a talk on that that was recently given. I forgot at which conference. Um, I watched it on YouTube, but actually I skimmed it on YouTube because it's too deep into the weeds for me to actually understand. Uh, so this is something purely internal. 
to the uh, JVM, uh, which usually allows languages, either Java itself or other JVM languages, um, to do something that either wasn't possible before or more likely to do something more with better performance and with a clearer programming model. So for example, uh, we, I, I mentioned invoke dynamic. Invoke dynamic is a way um, that the code can express that something has to be evaluated at runtime, which is unusual for Java, right? Usually the compiler picks types, for example, the types are encoded into the bytecode, and then at runtime all the bytes are set. And what, uh, what Invoke Dynamic allows is for the compiler to embed a piece of information into the bytecode, and then, the, then uh, at runtime this Invoke Dynamic call basically means, oh, I have to do stuff, and Invoke Dynamic will point to what stuff to do, and then uh, something will be evaluated at runtime. And that's, uh, that's for example, how Lambda's implemented. Lambda's are implemented based on Invoke Dynamic. Okay, what else do we have? One A Arch 64 port, not two. <laughs> I have no idea what this is about, that sounds interesting. Remove all the sources related to the ARM64 port while retaining this 32-bit ARM port in this port where I log on the 64 bit Are there two 64-bit ARM implementations? Yeah, two of them exist in the JDK. There are two, two directories. Uh, okay. Yeah, so duplicate implementation. Remove one of them. Makes sense. Nothing too fast. Default CDS archives. Oh, that's something we can look into. Uh, so uh, CDS is uh, class data sharing. What that means okay, uh, essentially is that when the JVM launches, it has to load a bunch of classes. And loading a class means locating it on the file system, basically finding the jar that it's in, and just you know loading the bytes on disk, uh, verifying that the bytecode is, is legal and doesn't uh, go against the JVMs, um, um, doesn't go against the JVMs. Um, it's called, there's a domain for that, bytecode validation, I think. So that means that it follows, it follows the rules that are set out for the bytecode. And then it's put into an internal data structure. And this process is always the same, no matter uh, how often you launch the JDK, it's always exactly the same process as long as the classes don't change. So Java lang string, for example, that's always the same result. So it's always the same process leading always to the same result. Can't we reuse that information? That's what uh, class data sharing archives are about. They're about um, making it possible to create this piece of create this information once, dump them into a file, and then later for the next launch, memory map that file so the uh, JVM doesn't have to do the whole process again for all these classes. You can do that. I forgot the Java versions. I think to, since Java 10 or 11, uh, you can do that. Uh, you can do that. I think since Java 8 or 9 for JDK classes at least on Oracle's JDK. I think it used to be a, a, a commercial feature. Now, since JDK 10 or 11, you can do that for application classes as well, and it's not no, no longer a commercial feature, so everybody can use it. And what JET 341 default CDS archives means, well, if these archives are always the same as long as classes don't change, and that means for any given JVM version that you download, those classes are never going to change for the lifetime of the, of the JVM download that you have there. Why not create an archive for exactly those classes and load it by default? And that's what this JEP does. It adds these archives. Um, so the JVM will by default load this ar memory, uh, lo take this file, memory map it, instead of you know validating Java lang string byte uh, strings bytecode every time again. So that's a performance thing, which should improve launch performance mainly. One. Okay, next up. A abortable mix collections for G1. Holy shit. Um, yeah, G1. Uh -huh. So let's just say this has something to do with G1. Okay, and let's, give, <laughs> let's, let's leave it at that. Uh, probably return unused committed memory from G1. If anybody's in the chat or somewhere else who knows what this means in detail, like, feel free to explain. I don't. Um, but it has something to do with G1, so I'm going to put it under performance. I think, I think it's going to keep the garbage collectors close to one another. Um, G1. So yeah, sorry, in case you didn't know, G1 is a garbage collector. Um, it's, it's the default since 
Java 9, I want to say. Yes, in Java 9 it's a default. And has different has has other goals than the uh, the normal than the former default garbage collector. The former default garbage collector was um, the parallel collector, and the parallel collector has the best throughput of all collectors, but it can have very long pauses, and that's not ideal for all the applications that deal with user input. It's most obvious with the desktop application. Think about desktop application um, that has every, let's say, every half hour has a 10 second um, GC pause, garbage collection pause. And I'm making these numbers up, right? I have no idea whether they're realistic or not. But the point is, having occasional but very long pauses might be ideal for throughput, but it can lead to bad user experiences. With a web back end, you can have the same. Um, like 99% of the users get like immediate responses, but 1% of the users fall into a garbage collection pause and then they have to wait like 10 seconds for the re for the uh, response. If you don't want that, uh, what you uh, like most most applications actually don't want that. Most applications would prefer a garbage collection that runs continuously um, and makes promises about how long the pauses can be maximally. And that's what G1 does. G1 and Shenandoah as well, as far as I know, they both do the same thing. They promise uh, they implement it differently, but they promise you a limit for pause times. And what that might mean is that. To keep to, to stick to that limit of, po of pause times, they may do collections very often. They may take a couple of threads out of your, out of your machine and lower overall throughput. They're definitely on throughput alone. They're definitely worse than uh, than the parallel uh, parallel GC. But they will guarantee that no user ever has to wait really long for a reply. Uh, for, and that's that's that worth it in many in many applications. So you can it's easier or it's it's a better overall experience. To sacrifice a couple percent in runtime um, and responses, and make every response a little bit uh, longer than making uh, some of them ridiculously long. Okay, that's the big things, right? So these are the JEPs. JEPs is a Java enhancement proposal. These are the numbers for them, and you can look at the details here, as you've seen. You, if you want to find out what portable mixed collections for G1 are, and then you may have a, some chance to understand it from this. Um, I didn't read this one yet. But uh, I know from experience that the garbage collection stuff is often beyond me. Um, but yeah, so these are fairly approachable. This is, and these are the bigger changes. These are the ones that deserve their own proposal that is then um, looked at individually. This is not the case for all the changes, right? So for example, if a stream got a new collector, the collector doesn't get a jab. So these, the small changes are not listed here. You have to check them out in a different manner. One of them would be to look at the, at the bugs, bug reports, I guess. But uh, I never got around to really see how that would work. What I did in the past was I would just download the source uh, of the JDK and do a full text search for at since 12. Because um, if you take a look, if you take a look at let's close this. Let's say we take a look at string, which got a couple of new methods. And 12. Oh, that's that's whole. That's a long string. Uh, so we can have a look at since 12, for example. Right here. So uh, strip is a new method that's new in 12. Uh, sorry, new in 11. Uh, if you don't know about that, I'll, there's, uh, I wrote a blog post about all the new small things in Java 11. And it has this tag, right? So what you can do is if you download the sources for the JDK, you just do a full text search for since 11, and you'll find all these bits and pieces. That's how I did it in the past. But thanks to Gunnar Morning's awesome work, we don't have to do that anymore. What we can do instead now is we can just go here and have a look at this diff. So old version, JDK 1101, new version is this one. When was this created? Like four or five weeks ago. Everything down to protected. So private change, we don't see private change. That makes sense. More properties, blah, blah, blah. And here we see the fully qualified name of the class and then what changed. It was modified, is it new, I think deleted, uh, no, but I think deleted is an entry as well, but it just didn't happen here. So by default, the, all the ComSun classes, I usually just skip them, because these are uh, implementation details. So I'm not going to look at those. Um, Doctory, I have no idea what this is about. Doctory, maybe that's part of Java Doctory. It makes sense based on the name, but I have no idea. 
So let's see, file input stream, file output stream, input stream, these three things have changed. Let's have a look. Uh, the, oh yeah, the finalized method starts getting removed. That's interesting. So finalized was, um, finalized was deprecated in 11. Let's see, do I get, I think if we look at, does string have a finalized method? method? He deprecated. Oh, in nine already. So finalized was deprecated. Um, that's a whole can of worms. Oh, by the way, I know that you only see half that the half of that IntelliJ window and that it's cut off. Oh, we can move it to the left like, for now. But it's not important. Like if as soon as I start actually writing code, you'll see um, the code in, in, in a fuller in a fuller window, in a larger window, so you can actually see what's going on. So. Um, the finalized method has been deprecated in Java 9 because, um, once again, those are te very technical details. Um, I think the basic problem was that the guarantees for finalize um, are so are insufficient to solve any actual problem with it. Um, because they are very, very weak, the guarantees, um, that one, when this is called and if it's called. So using finalize, for example, to... Um, Let's say if you have a lock on a file, and they say, look, if this if this object here, this file reader that I have, gets garbage collected, well, that would be a great time uh, to release the file lock. I know I'll do it and finalize, and then when the and the garbage, when the file reader gets garbage collected, finalize will be called, and then, or maybe I should have explained that for earlier. So that's the goal behind finalize. Uh, oh, see, there's an explanation. You can do read that as well. Holy shit, this is long. Finalize method. So finalize, let's start over. Finalize is defined in object. Every method has a protected finalize method. Um, it's called by the garbage collector uh, on an object when garbage collection determines that there are no more references to the object. Okay? So that means uh, basically when your object gets garbage collected, then you can put stuff in finalize and then you can do some cleanup. And as I said, what you might think is great. I have a file reader, I have a lock on a file, I'll. I, I, um, I give up the lock on the file in the finalized method. But that's not ideal, and instead of me mumbling about it, let's just read this. Let's read the deprecation notice. The finalization, goddamn pre key promoter. Um, am I putting breakpoints on the top? Why would, should I see them there? Yeah, anyway, probably for another day. The finalization mechanism is inherently problematic. Finalization can lead to performance issues, deadlocks, and hangs. Errors and finalizers can lead to resource leaks. That's, I think, what I just explained. Um, there's no way to cancel finalization if it is no longer necessary, and no ordering is specified among calls to finalize. Furthermore, there are no guarantees regarding the timing. This is, I think, uh, this is what the main problem that I had in mind. There are no guarantees regarding the timing of finalization. That might mean that, yeah, the garbage, that your, your file reader might no longer be in use, but that doesn't mean that it gets collected soon. Could be collected and or at least finalized could be called in half an hour. So for half an hour you'd keep a lock on that file. That's bad. So the whole mechanism is deprecated. Since Java 9, and apparently Java 12 makes good on that and removes some of these finalized implementations. At least in input and output stream. Then uh, what do we have here? Skip and bytes in Java IO input stream. Okay, you can skip bytes while reading a stream. Not exactly spectacular. There's a final static public class Unicode block in character. And the changes chess symbol Java accent. It looks like a, a new constant, I guess, right? Let's have a look at Unicode block. No, let's not have a code with the Unicode block. As I mentioned earlier, let's collect them for now if they seem remotely interesting. And let's have a look at them later. Um, so let's Put them at the top. Let's have a to-do thing here. To-do, let's have a look at this. Um, for example, this one. Okay. What else do we have, have up here? Final stream, final stream. We have that Unicode block. Unicode script will be similar. Oh, class change? What would change on class? Uh, uh, constable. This is to do with the consty thing that we talked about earlier, that's, wait, that's Jeb, 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 this one, Jeb 334, that's a constable thing. 
uh, type the script as well, I guess. Okay, and then some serial version already changed, nothing particular. On Java line class, there's method array type, component type, describe a constable description string. On optional. Huh? On optional, there's a method describe constable? Well, that's weird. Okay, let's get back to this later. I have a feeling this is going to be a very messy list. Uh, can we turn wrapping now? Is it on? I don't know. Did I make it worse or better? <laughs> uh, okay, if I kick these out, then it gets a little less annoying. Let's have a look at those later. What else? This is the consti thing. Uh, I'm not going to look at that at all. Let's skip all of that. Dublin enum. Constable, constant desk. We don't need that. Oh, no, I misunderstood that. This is not on optional. I'm totally I'm sorry. Sorry, this stuff is on on double. Now I get it. On double, there's a method describe constable that returns an optional. Okay, so this addition is based, is also, other oh, comes from the constant thing. And this one as well. So these, all, all these public methods, they are based on, on condi. Did I say consti? I think, it's, I think they call it condi. So yeah, we don't have to look at that after all. Phew. Then we can just go to this list here. Um, this method is new. That's, that's once again, it's the same thing as before. Enum desk. Public finals. Final static public class enum desk. Huh. I would guess that enum desk is something similar to these type of scriptures that we saw, but I'm not sure. Exception in initializer error, no longer has a cause, oh, as a method to get a cause, okay, fine by me, more constable stuff, just got constable, constable, that's all the same, so it's the same shit, different types, so to speak, any type of common types. Okay, this is also Condi, I think. Big list was this new, new. Yeah, type of scripture. Also, that's something like that. Don't want to look at that. Var handle, also. Boy, there are a bunch of things that I really don't have a good grasp on, like var handle, Condi, and Indi. I really have to look into that at some point to really understand what's going on in there and to understand more of these changes. Because as you can see, there are a bunch of things going on down there under the hood. And it kind of annoys me that I don't really have the, the skill to understand what exactly is going on. More describe constable. Boy, this is, I hope this is not boring you to death. Sure as hell isn't exactly entertaining to me. But you know, this is the kind of work you have to do if you want to know what's new. To walk through a, a knee deep through a swamp of boring changes. String. Align. Ooh. String as a method align. And indent. These have to do with with string literals, but I thought string literals were kicked out. Actually, I'm pretty sure that string literals were oh, not kicked out, kicked back to the next Java version. Transform. Well, those are interesting. Um, okay, let's have a look. New methods on string. Um, that's going to be interesting. Do we need names? Ah, oh, we can come back to it if we don't find them. Screw cache reports, you can get an SSL session. Sure, I'm sure that's awesome. Uh, on files, there's a mismatch method. Let's have a look at that. Uh, at files, mismatch. I just now realized that all of these are updated APIs, I think, right? With, with IPI, by the way, I mean like um, a class that's already there. If optional and stream gets changed, that means an updated API to me. If a new type is introduced that does something totally different, then I would call it a new API. But the dis distinction is somewhat academic. <laughs> I mainly made it uh, because otherwise it doesn't fit on my uh, on my slides. Because the list of changes was so long that on the slide, it's just like a list of updated or new APIs would just go below the, the available space there. Ooh, something happened in the chat. 
Yeah, Ross Ringgold's are out. Hi, Samuras. Yeah, they're out, right? Um, so it's interesting then that the methods that are used for that are still in. So in case you're new and you're wondering, hey, why, why come back and why, why the jokes about the shirt on? We had a session earlier today where our, um, and our surfman and Zamuras and I checked out whether the stream works and uh, I got some I got some feedback, some things I have to change. One of them was, get a shirt, man. Which I totally did. See, I listened to you. For those of you who wonder why wouldn't I have a shirt on, uh, it's, I'm in Vietnam, it's 32 degrees in here. Uh, it's more bearable when you don't wear shirts. So, okay, let's get back to the Java though. Um, yeah, the diff is outdated, that's possible, right? Because the diff is on uh, version 27. Um, yeah, I got that in the list, we'll see that later. That's entirely possible. Um, because this diff is based on, on, on the build 27 and I'm build 32. And as far as I know, oh yeah, sure. Every, every week a new build is released. And this week, this build is like five weeks old. This makes a whole lot of sense. So it's very possible that, it's, that uh, those methods, we'll not find that methods later on. We'll see, we'll see. I think we've been here. Compact number format. <laughs> I didn't even know there's a Java text package, I think. Okay. Let's have a look at that. Um, this is a new class, so I guess there are a bunch of new methods. Yeah, let's look at those later. Number format, get compact number instance, get compact number instance, put it all kale. Not interesting right now. I mean, that's related to the other change. So when we look at the, um, at the compact number instance, then we'll see it. Look at this as well. Number format style. Okay. I don't know. What's a style? I know what the format is, but what could what could what the style be? Huh? Why does it say top here? Did I type that? Oh. <laughs> That's this thing here. Hookie! What else do we have? Number format provider. Okay, I'm done with the formats. I'm sure they're awesome. Ooh, complete with future got new methods. Oh wow, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's interesting. That's it. I definitely want to look at that. Completable future got new methods. Like the thing with completable future is that I really don't use it very often. So I I, I dig deep I dug deep into the API and I know exactly how all these methods relate. Or rather I knew that. <laughs> I had to look at my own table uh, to get back to it. And maybe so they're basically a uh, completable future has like the API is huge because it's basically a uh, n-dimensional matrix of different use cases. So, for example, you want to do something, or you want to do something asynchronously. Uh, so, you, whatever whatever method you have, now you need two variants of those, and there are more cases like that um, where you or more, or more dimensions rather. So, when you have an idea of what a computer future can do, then you might end up with having to implement like six methods because there are like two times three different variants of this. So. Um, and I, the, I, well, I could, but these are all have to do with exceptions, right? So it looks like there's one new concept, whatever exceptionally does exactly, and then it's implemented like in five different ways for different use cases. But we'll see that later. Completion stage, that's the interface that Completable Future implements. So Completable Future is a future, and it's a completion stage. That's an interface, and so I guess these would be exactly the same methods, yeah. So these are the method definitions and these are the implementations. No need, reason to look at both. Okay, jar file is unchanged. So why is it listed here? <laughs> I guess nobody knows, and that's why the exclamation mark is there. This is one I want to look at. Uh, you, the, that's, a, that's a collector teeing. So that usually means that you can put stuff into two other collectors, I guess. Let's see, collectors teeing. Okay, deflator, inflator. Zip file, the stuff. Oh, finalize got removed here as well. Cipher. <laughs> got to string implementation. Okay, I'm sure that's important. Javax lang model source. I don't know what this type is. I don't, I want to look at that type later. Just because I don't know what it is.
Eldap. Yeah, I'm not going to read further. Eldap. Done. Scroll. Eldap. After his world connection, he has to get SSL session. And we're done. We're done at the bottom of the list. Ha! Huh. Well, that was... That could have been worse. Like the diff for... Like, you won't believe this, but I actually went through the diff of Java 9, I think. Come on. Back, back. There we go. On this one now. So there was a diff from JDK 8 to 9. And that one was huge. It was... I like... It took hours to just look at each change and decide whether it's worth investigating. So some from a meta type system. Dude, what's a meta type system? You know, Zomuros, maybe you should get a stream. You know more about this than I do. Why am I why am I talking? I should get into a hangout session and just give up we just give you control over this. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. That's awesome. It's good to have knowledgeable people about, around. Rocking Java Java. Ooh. Okay, or maybe if you want to implement a compiler in Java, like <coughs> Graal, <coughs> maybe that has something to do with it. Well, who knows? Um, so, okay, so these are the things uh, that we have here. And I think what is most interesting are just these, these, these things here. Because as I said, we can look at switch expressions later if you want to. I'm not sure exactly what I can do with defaults to the archives. I guess we can hunt down the archive file on disk and screw around with that. Uh, yeah, get dinner. See you later. I got my dinner right here. <laughs> it was more like a night snack. I already had dinner a couple hours ago. Yeah, so let's have a look at at, the, at these API changes here. Just What we're just going to do is very simple. We're just going to take these class names and we're just going to have a look at what the class looks like and um, cheers you too surfman okay for that we're finally going to switch to IDE let's see so I got all this set up let's see where that works and I hope it would now I'm going to go with this awesome huh oh yeah by the way um, so you will occasionally see me typing or rather you'll get the impression that I'm typing and you won't see something on screen that's because I'm capturing the IntelliJ window, just the IntelliJ window. So for example, the, the reason for that is that I want to be able to, to tap into the chat as I'm doing right now without you, you know, seeing the chat, chat yet again, once on, on top of IntelliJ and once on the right hand side in the stream. Uh, so that means I'm just capturing the IntelliJ window. Some things that IntelliJ does are in the same window and some things aren't. So for example, let's just pick some random class. So I'll press Control P to see what parameter this is. Then I'm pretty sure you see that. But if I press Control Q to see the Java doc here, then I think you don't see that because it's apparently a new window. That's a little weird. And if I hit Control N to go to a new type, um, then you can't see that either. So um, please excuse me. Sometimes you have the feeling that things are just like happening out of thin air. Okay, so this is what I expected. Uh, they are constant for the Gregorian extended Unicode character block. Unicode block. Uh, okay, more Unicode support. So Java really like like improved Unicode support. I think from 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 seven or six even to to Unicode ten. Like I'm really guessing here somewhere in my slide deck. Um, you know what? Let's have a look at that. Since since we're here to not we're not here to guess, right? Um, we are here to learn things. So let's learn things for myself. Let's have a look at slides.codefx.org. These are all the slides for all my talks. And I put a new picture here from JokerCon. Uh, they made really great pictures, I think. Um, it's a Java X is here talk. And now I'm just going to have a quick look. These are all the new things. And my, my goal is, by the way, I'm in the middle of updating the, the, the switch expression stuff because it's really just this slide for now. I'm updating, I'm working on updating that. And whatever I'm doing today is going to go into the slide deck as well. This one is, this deck is huge. You can have like a, a full day just talking about that. These are all the changes since 8 in varying levels of detail. Well, all of them, literally, but many of them. Okay, so updated APIs. And I think at the end of this, we will see 
11.9. Somewhere here. No, new APIs. Or could be JVM change. Who knows? There we go. So in Java 9, Unicode 7 and 8 were supported. Support for Unicode 7 and 8 was added. And Java 11, uh, Unicode support for 9 and 10 was added. And also somewhere here, uh, I think we scrolled by that earlier. Um, there is more support. Mm, wait, wait, I got it. I got it. Come on. Unicode, aha, there we go. Property resource bundle now has support for Unicode, which it didn't before. I didn't even know. But uh, yeah, you couldn't put Swiris there. What a loss. And now you can. Uh, so yeah, Unicode support has improved from basically from, what did I just say? Uh, um, from 7 and 8 were introduced in 9 and then 10 11, uh, sorry, and then 9 and 10 are supported since 11. So like Unicode um, um, 7 to 10 were added, Unicode support for that. And maybe this is something to do with um, adding more stuff or next Unicode uh, version. I don't know. Okay, so that's that's boring though. Let's go. Let's go back to code and let's have a look at what else changed. There's a new thing, Enum Desk. I would guess like this. This would likely have to do something with meta programming that someone else mentioned as well. Enum Desk. Here, Enum. Desk. What? Why can I not find the class? Open source file. Library source not does not match. The okay. Why not? I don't mind as long as I see the class. There, I see the class. I don't mind about the rest. Go away. Oh, we keep the red bar there apparently. Um. A nominal descriptor for an enum constant. Yeah, I guess that would then have to do with the metaprogramming, with the uh, type of scriptors that we saw earlier. So, nothing that we're going to deal with most likely. New methods on string. Come on, now we have to find something interesting, right? This would be a really boring stream if we just don't find anything of interest. Since 12, what do we have here? Indent. Okay, so they're still here in build 32. Um, Adjust the indentation of each line of this character string based on the value of... Okay, so the goal here was, let me show you what, what the idea was here. Um, if we talk about, let's say, Java... Let's have a new Java class. Let's see what else. New Java class here. In the package Java 12.api. String, we're going to add a new class. String changes, maybe? Because you can call it string as well. How did I, how did I solve that problem in the past? Lines will be, oh, I get the individual changes, um, individual class files. You know, I can't call it, I mean, I can't call it string. Or can I? Can I have the same name as in Java lang? Ooh, I can. Uh, okay. Yeah, we don't want that though. Oh, come on. Seriously? No. Don't just the one class, please. Thank you. Um, okay. Public, public static void main. There we go. Um, ugh, this is ugly indentation. I'm really sorry. Let me try to fix that. Uh, oh boy. I can't write code for people who indent um, code with just two spaces. And as much as I like the people, like this is just. I mean, Google does the same apparently. But still, I mean, I can get why you would use spaces instead of tabs. I mean, everybody, you know, is confused sometimes in their life. But how can you be that confused that you start using two spaces? I don't get it. And I'm willing to fight to the death over this, right? If a team, if a team does something, I'll join them. But if I can, if I can <laughs> be part of the decision, then if I tooth and nail for tabs. I always make the joke that for people who use spaces for indentation, you know what, just why do you use new line? Just, you know, fill the line up with spaces till it wraps. That's the same. You don't need control characters, spaces all the way. Okay, seriously though. Um, for the goal is, the idea was that we get multi-line strings, right? So you would be able to say a string, uh, let's say HTML is, and then maybe something like, let's say three backticks. 
and then we could say I don't know <laughs> now it turns out I can't even write HTML uh, let's just write uh, okay body so just to, just to be clear this is not in Java 12 this was in as a preview feature preview feature but it got kicked off because kicked off um, uh, what was the wording? So the idea that the preview feature is, just like the switch expressions are a preview feature, that it's unlikely that it has to change. It can change if it has to, but it's unlikely that it will. It's unlikely it's necessary to change it again. And uh, Brian Getz had the impression that this would not be true, and not, not him alone, but uh, him as well. I uh, had the impression that this will not be true of multiple strings, that there would, uh, there's too much stuff that still has to be decided, so let's not do that. So the goal is you can write something like this. Okay? Uh, now the problem here is, why is body indented with like what actually should be like this even, right? Why is it indented with like four taps? If you want to write this to a file, you would want this to be indented only, oh, sorry. You would want this to be indented got, not at all. And this is just one tap, right? So you want to get rid of the leading indents. And that's one of the reasons why methods like indent were added. So I can now call indent number of leading white space characters to add or remove zero. Well, this is not a legal string, of course, but if it would be, then this would have as a result that you would find in the file this output. Let's see. Okay, oh, no, 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 not even a file, right? So the string would then look like this. It would, have, it would consist of three lines, but they would not have uh, indentation. Adjust the indentation of each line of the string based on the normalized line information characters. The string is conceptually separate into, oh, sorry, ah, you can read this. Um, okay, let me not do it that way. Ha, ah, I caught myself there. Let's read it here. So indent, adjust the indentation of each line of the string based on the value of n and normalizes line termination character. I in case you're mixing slash n slash r slash n, I guess. This string is conceptually separate into lines using string lines. Each line is an adjusted as described below and then suffix with a line feed slash n. The resulting lines are then concatenated returned. That's like a lot of work. I'm happy somebody does it for us. Um, hurrah, spaces are inserted. Boy, it's useless this method. Any other value than zero will, I will, um, <laughs> I will not like any other value than zero here. Well, you can put four, then you can replace all four spaces with a tap, I guess. <laughs> anyway, um, ooh. I removed if a given line does not contain sufficient white space, then all leading are removed. Huh. However, oh, license is still normalized. Okay, so if I get this right, that means that this would not have any effect. I would have to know that these are one, two, three, four levels of indentation. So I want to get rid of it, would be like this. Okay, we can try this out. Let, let's do this. So let's have um, a regular string. Now this, this is going to look really weird. Let's see, like this. I'm sorry, I am. You're not supposed to write to, to form a code like that, but um, you know, in the name of science. And then then by zero, and then let's print the thing. Yeah, so. Yeah, uh, so Surfman writes, now that's a good thing of the new quick Java releases, so that incomplete, unusable, unstable features can be pushed to the next one. Yeah, well, I would guess that unstable features uh, were never, or when, like no feature was ever released that the majority of the Java uh, community, or at least those with a voting right, would consider unstable. So the goal was always to not have unstable 
um, features. I think now with the preview features, it moved a little bit more into the direction of instability, meaning like in the past, a feature would have been ironclad to be released. And like, no doubt about it, it had to be basically set in stone. And no, sorry, not basically, it had to be set in stone, period. And now with a new preview, language preview um, uh, concept, the idea is that, hey, we can have something that might still have to change. We don't really want to change it, but it might have to change uh, in the future. And if it does, we can still do it. And then we can make it, un we can unpreview it. target release error 12. Is that the problem? Why, why do I get this error? Is that the problem? What? But it's, it's, it comes from the problem. Isn't the problem set up for 12? 12. Source target 12. Release 12 requires target. Yeah, something weird. Could have been the settings, maybe? It's possible that you don't see the pop ups. I'm, I'm, hectic, I'm, I'm clicking through all the settings in the project and the project settings and the other settings are looking for a reason why I get this error Java compiler target bytecode version 12 oh project bytecode version why does it say the fuck? I didn't say the fuck. it's <laughs> uh, it's uh, somewhere it, well there was still a version 11 hidden no idea why though. Come on. Come on, tell you run this. Like if you fight me again, I'll just use the command line. That would be a fail for both of us. Oh yeah, true. So uh, it put stuff out, but uh unfortunately I forgot the slash end at the end. That would really have helped. Um do it again. Okay, we get this. Let's create a variable. What what? What? How is how, how is this an expression? Ah, oh, never mind. So my goal is to tr experiment with variant ways of indentation. So let's say I want to indent two more, and then I go minus one here. It's interesting because it could not, re it cannot remove a single white space, sorry, on a single space character because it has tabs, or does it? Oh yeah, that's like a small tab because there's so many characters in front. But this is a regular tab character, and then let's go minus two, and let's see what the result is. So as it's expected, oh, we don't actually know whether zero does nothing. Because we always indent, but it, it like extends the reason does nothing. So the first one, the first output that we're going to see is just the regular output. Okay, then this is the one that's indented by zero, nothing changed. This is indented by two, which I guess nothing happens because the indent is already on that level or even higher. Did I get that right? If n spaces are inserted, the line. All right. So I guess there are spaces here, but because there are, is that the case? Yeah, so there are spaces here, uh, but the tab character, they're less than a tab width. So they don't really move this output around, but yeah, there are spaces. Like if you see the, the, the selection, you see like one tab, two tabs, three tabs, like four tabs is just a very small distance and then one, two spaces. So if we go up to four here, then we should actually see a difference. Well, it's basically just a characteristic of how IntelliJ prints these. Um, if you fix a uh, tab to see to say a tab is four spaces, then you should see it two as well. Yeah, so here we see, right? So now we have four, and that means in the beginning you have like four spaces. Um, and they fill up an entire tab width, and that's why it's in this one level more. Okay, great. So we have that covered. Then minus one and minus two, each of them remove one tab. So my problem here is then, if I go minus infinity, basically, which in this case is um, eight, then I guess that foo will end up at the beginning of the line, right? Huh. So these indent methods are rather weird. I don't know whether they, you can, I mean, this list, this individual method, I'm not sure whether we can make it work well. Hmm. 
because what I would hope for would to turn this into this as simple as possible. But if I have to, if you have to count indentations, then you're lost. I mean, then it's game over. Then just remember, right? That originally you would have like three backticks and then the block of text, and that would mean if you add an if around that, then the entire block would get indented once, and then you basically have to find out where the indent minus three is and turn it to indent minus four. That's ridiculous. So either I'm missing something or this method really doesn't help with multi-line strings, at least not as much as you would want to. Okay. Let's close this and this. Let's go back to code. Indent. Okay, we covered that one. Ah, whew. Nah, sorry, long day. Um, yeah, I've been so hyped about this. <laughs> I didn't sleep a lot. So in the, even, in the afternoon, I said, okay, you know, I gotta sleep. I gotta like get two hours of nap time before I go to the cinema and the later stream. But I just couldn't. It's like down, I had ideas, and then, you know, and it, like, sometimes it just drives me and I can't do anything. I have to get up and do stuff, mostly work. Okay, so since we got in then transform, what does transform do? This method allows the application of a function to this string. The function should expect a single string argument and produce an re R result. Any exception thrown by S will be propagated to the caller. What? Okay, so I guess there's a use case. What would be the use case? Because what, that, what it means is um, that you can do foo.transform and not only the function, right? The function that takes a string and does something, for example, string to uppercase. Of course, in this case, I could just use method reference, but you know, for, for demonstration's sake, let, let's keep it like this. Okay. In, wait, what? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, this is a lambda, no. Well, wait, what? What was? Why is this all handling? Ah, okay. Okay, so this creates a compiled error because um, this is a lambda expression, and the lambda expression does not have a definite type. Even though to uppercase returns a string, the compiler cannot turn this into a function of string to string. Um, it needs to know which, which case this, uh, which, which type this is, but it cannot know because transform says it needs a function from string to R, whatever R is. So then the compiler looks into this method and says, okay, like if I have to guess R, what does print line take? If print line just takes something that it has to be a string, I would guess that R is string and then, you know, it, it can make it work. But there are two versions of print line and that doesn't work. I guess if I put string here, then, oh no, that's the same as before. That doesn't work. But somewhere here? Hella ugly, but works. Okay, so my, but my point is, um, Maybe we don't need this after all. Maybe we just you know make it method or make it. Um, we call this transformed. Okay, so um, we use this. We we give we call foo transform and we give the function and we get capital letters foo out. Okay, that makes sense. What I'm wondering about is, why do I need a method for that, right? I could just call, let, let's say I have this method here, um, this function, and maybe that's the reason. Because I would have to declare the function first. Now I can just call to a case on it. Hmm. Like, I don't get what, I mean, I know what the method does. I just don't get what it's there. I mean, you can also just, in this case, do this. Can't you always just do this? Um, foo dot to uppercase. Uh, sorry. Foo, foo dot uppercase. Why would I give it a function? Does transform say? No. no, 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 no. The method allows application of a function to this string. The function is better. An exception to all, but blah, function has supply test. Nope, no uh, explanation at all of what transform is needed. Boy, now I'm really curious. Okay, let's see. Uh, surfing as a theory. User admin is admin transform as to user, it will get user as. 
I mean, true, yeah. I, I mean, I transformed it to another string. Maybe that's the limiting. Yeah, but you still don't need it, right? I mean, so the example that he gives. I think so, too. I think streams, optional, something is there. I think there's something... There's some use case that we don't see. Like, for example, predicate.not is a good example. Um, so, since Java... I used to know all this by heart. Now I don't anymore. Uh, there's a not method, a static not method, since Java 11 on predicate. This method looks stupid. Like, why would I need it? I have target, I have negate here. Why would I need not? But this is really cool. Because in a stream, the problem with this is, yes, you can call negate, but if you say, um, optional of foo, and then I want to filter, and then I want to say, um, let's see, what is it called? Uh, s dot is empty. Okay, right. And then I realize, oh wait, no, I gotta invert this. Of course I can do this, that works. But if this thing is a little bit longer, then having the exclamation mark somewhere in the middle of a longer expression is not ideal. Um, what I want to do is I want to invert the entire thing. I want to invert this test. How can I do that? I mean, it is a, it is a, is it a predicate, right? So can I just call negate on it? Nope, you can't. Because as I said earlier, it's a lambda expression, which, mean it, which is a poly expression. It can have various types. The compiler does not know that this is a predicate of string. If we can tell it, we can do this. Now we tell it, look, this, th this thing here is a predicate of string. And then this entire stuff becomes a predicate of string, and then they call, can call negate. Like, this is really not readable. This is bad. But the static method does not suffer from the problem because the static method not gets a predicate. So what we can do here is we can call predicate dot not, and of course we're going to make a, add a static import in a second here. Predicate dot not from s to s is empty. Well, I hope this is there. We go some some point. I'm sure I get this right. There we go. Okay. Now if we add this. Uh, static import, and now we can even add the method reference, but which doesn't work for me, but because I have warnings turned off, and so I don't get the quick fix. Um, but what? I, uh, let's do this manually. Strings empty. Like, how is this for readability? Optional from filter the ones that are not empty. This is awesome to read. So this is this is a case where predicate not was just added for this specific use case, and it's not obvious from looking at the method where it's going to be used. And I really hope that the same is true here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that's that's what I was going for. I mean, you know, calm down. I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so we, well, what what Surfman said, like maybe I want to use it as admin transform, and then as get user. Yeah, but I, I don't I don't really see it yet. So the question is, will I want to, do I want to do this? Oh, look, there's a user class already lying around. Um, well, every time I move the, move the cursor, we get this pop up. Um, since we're nitpicking, you don't need the braces here. Apparently, it's here. But I still don't get it. I mean, you can just, like, why? Obviously, you could do this. Admin is user repo dot user admin. Okay, I'm gonna, you know what, let's do this. Since we're, since we're here to learn, uh, what another thing we can learn is that um, uh, some people at Oracle are really, really cool at helping, helping you out with questions like this. So let's, let's do this. Let's go back to a browser window. I'm sure I'm going to catch it here. And then let's go to Twitter. Um, <laughs> you're excited? <laughs> yeah, I'm too. Uh, let's tweet. Let's ask Stuart Marks. Um, uh, let's say we're currently, oops, we're currently experimenting uh, with Java 12. Oops. And so, string. Like the, the the amount of typos I make is beyond is off the charts. I need a TPM measurement, like typos per minute. <laughs> I've been watching a little StarCraft streams, and action per minute are probably important there. I I need I need typos per minute, dude. 
We currently experiment with Java 12 and saw string dot transform. Uh, um, what was I say? Like uh, use. I, say, I can say something like if we use it just like that, it's pointless. I get we we guess there is a use case for string option or something like that. So that to to see this is the kind of things that go to my head when I tweet. Like tweets take time for me. We currently experiment with Java 12 and so string from the form. We're not. Uh, I'm not really sure. Well, we don't know. Not sure. That's a euphemism. Uh, we don't understand what what it's good for. What it's good for. It's really, if I add a string and a transformation uh, and, a, and, a, and a method, method that trans is it as input. I can just call it. No need for a for redirection. What are we missing? Because that's the point, right? I'm sure we're, miss we're obviously missing something. There's a method like this doesn't get added. Um, without some scrutiny. We're currently experimenting with Java 12 and saw string to transform. We don't understand what it's good for. Clearly, if we, have, if, I, if we, I, we, okay, if we have a string and a method that takes it as input, uh, shit, now we're running out of characters. We can just call it, oh, it's gonna be, oh, it's gonna end up character pushing here. No need for redirection. No need for, no need for a uh, function interface. What are we missing? Like, this is an important point, right? Um, because I'm sure we are missing something. Okay, um, I, I, think, I think I don't have the mental bandwidth to keep track of this. So, if somebody else sees a reply, then let me know. <laughs> yeah, I don't go to Java Code Geeks. Like, do me, do me a favor, Zamoras. Scroll to the bottom of the post. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Just by the title, I'm sure this is from Dustin Marks. Uh, but whatever, like scroll to the bottom of the article and somewhere in gray on less light gray, so, so the, in a way that you really don't see it, uh, there might be a link to the original article. If you post that one, I click it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll not give them my traffic. <laughs> um, okay. I think I think I think we're done here. I think we can go back uh, to look at method stuff. Oh, damn! My hair's out of the picture. You have to tell me. Like my hair's like half my character. Like I know stuff, all right, but I'm also the dude with the hair. <laughs> it looks like shit. So the thing is here. It's warm. It's moist, and I wear a helmet when I'm outside. So like this is just insane. The hair is just whatever. Does what it wants. Not what I want. Ha! Dustin Marks, I told you about it. JDK transform. Damn, the guy is good. Like really, like he, he took my spot at being the go-to guy for the most recent developments. I think his posts are always like, I think they could be written a little bit better, but he's always so close to when something new happens. It's amazing. Ah, you should follow him on Twitter as well. Blah blah. The current transform is very blah. Oh. Okay, the originating goal of string transform was to allow custom in ah right that makes sense. Okay, I'm not sure whether it means that it should exist, but the goal here is now I get it. The goal is to do this. Um, so let's go back to this example. Um, you do this. I don't know. I don't know where to put it. Uh, so you, like, imagine this for like a multi a multi line uh, string literal, right? So like the one like the one that I had earlier. Anyway, right? So imagine this was would be um, not a regular string that I put it together here, but the new kind, right? With the back ticks here, and then like no new line characters needed, and no plus needed, and then at the end, and then in the end you want to go, okay, I, I want to get rid of those in, in indentations. 
I'm gonna align this <laughs> typos typos are real man. What? Uh why not? Ah uh, indent, it's not aligned, it's indent, right? That does align it as well. Anyway, indent, okay. Now in the, it turns out indent doesn't do what I want, and maybe there's an align method that doesn't do what I want. No, I know what I want, I want. It's something else. So then I can just call transform here, for example, transform to uppercase. And so I can just simply append it to my string literal. Yeah, that makes sense. And once again, I'm not, I'm not saying that this method should uh, is carry its own weight, but now I at least see the use case. Uh, okay, cool. Um, what, my battery is running low? How can my battery be running low? <laughs> Wait a moment. Um, quick question: Is it a good sign if there are sparks and like small explosion noises when uh, you put a plug into the into the plug, whatever? <laughs> you know what I mean? Put the plug into the wall. Uh, and there was some sparks and this noise. I'm sure, that's right. Uh, 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 how was return string? But then was we'll changed to return object. Become generic. Da da da. Return string so I can change. Okay. What transform to in transform to long transform to double? I need it to be useful. What? But I have described the current plan is to implement this functionality via the method transform rather than operator such as this. Okay, I'm going to leave this tab open. I'm not going to bore you by reading it, but it could be interesting. The method of this particular decision to transform sets the precedent for the use of the name transform for method that does similar things to other classes. Yeah, well, <laughs> well you, could, you could call it map then, right? Um, JDK blah proposes the addition of the chain method for stream and optional to mitigate the disruption of the linear flow of pipeline stages when using methods that acts upon a stream option. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's actually something that, that annoyed me a couple of times. So let's say you have a helper method that does something awesome with your stream. I don't know what. Um, it's a little bit it's a little uncontroversial to return a stream or to, to take a stream as sorry, to take a stream as a parameter. So let's just do not do that. Um, let's say I do this. Do something. Oh, oh boy, this gets annoying up there. Let's remove that. Oh yeah, quick, quick. Sorry. So to get that, what you could do here now um, is you could do something like this then. I mean, it doesn't make sense here, but yeah. So uh, I want to say once again, uh, yeah, could, could make sense. Uh, okay, let's revert all these changes so we keep it working like this. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm missing a little bit out of the chat. Actually, yeah, that was a little bit sad. I, uh, I could, I put the chat window to be always on top, so I could always see it, which would be really nice. Uh, but then uh, OBS has problems capturing IntelliJ and such a flicker. Uh, at least uh, it flickers in OBS output locally. I'm not sure whether it flickers online, but I didn't want to get, uh, go that, that risk. So I have to check out the, uh, the chat on purpose, and I'll do that in a second. Um, so yeah, you have a method do something. Well, I don't care what it does. It does something. And then when you have an optional pipeline like here, and what I want to do now is here in this place, I want to call do something, but I can't. Like now I have to do something out here. Do something. No? Come on. Oh, it's not static. Wow, this is laggy. Like something is eating into IntelliJ's performance right now. Shouldn't, is it the video? 
Oh, my CPU is at 85%. What the actual holy crap. That is OBS. Why is it? That is way more than it did earlier. Huh, weird. Okay. Whatever, I'm an expert on this. 0.5 FPS at most. Okay, crap, we have to fix this then. Um, mm -mm. Okay, so uh, general consensus is I'm back to low FPS, which makes sense because IntelliJ, uh, sorry, CPU is almost saturated. Does it have to do with electricity? No. Huh? Okay, for no apparent reason, CPU load is down to 30%, which it was earlier today. So, can I get a quick feedback whether the FPS is better? You're back. What the hell? Okay, so this is what happened in case my, 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 the sound didn't work. Um, I noticed that IntelliJ was getting laggy, and I checked. I realized that um, OBS, so the tool that I used to stream all of this, had a CPU caused a CPU load of eight percent. I'm not sure whether it's a total CPU load or just OBS CPU load, um, and that's weird. And I did I changed nothing. I basically just called, said once, show me only the desktop, minimize all the windows, and got them back up, just because I want to check something. Uh, and now it's down to twenty five to thirty percent. Yeah, I did the re-index. <laughs> no, yeah, no, though, it didn't. Well, maybe it did, but that wasn't the cause. Because when I looked at top, uh, it actually said that OBS was taking up those those 80%. So, um, OBS did something weird. Okay, let's get back to the case. So, uh, where were we? We were here to do something with optional, right? I want to do something um, at this stage. So, what, what now I have to do is, like, this is a weird kind of wrapping. So, first happens this, then happens this. And then happens this. That's just not cool. Um, although, come to think of it, this is just a flat map, right? Wait, I'm, I'm still not getting something. This is just a flat map. Let's change stuff. Do something. Oh no, 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 it's not a flat map. Of course, no, it's not a flat map because it doesn't take the value, it takes the entire optional. Okay, now I get it. Yeah. So, what the goal is here is like, Shouldn't there be something like, let's say, chain, or maybe even transform, where I can just say, uh, do something, and then it would take the entire optional and pass it into this. So it's basically like a flat map, but a flat map takes the value and expects as a target. Um, so flat map has this um, signature. It wants to take the value that's of the element that's in the optional and returns an optional of that. Um, but we don't want that. Maybe we want to do this. Perform. Maybe I would do less typos. I wouldn't copy paste so much. Want this. Okay. Also makes sense. Let's go back to the post. Mm -mm -mm. So that's interesting. I opened, the J J I opened this. No, I didn't. Uh, I will look at this later. Now, option transform that will live on arbitrary operation optional. That's basically what we just talked about. Okay. Talk that one as well. There was some confusion and consternation about some transformers at the JK, but during the summer. A particular interesting sentence in Mark's message states that while this API point stands on its own, this is really part of Jim's RSL work, which involves several API additions to string, and which will likely have a significant effect on how string reflows are used in Java code. Okay, so I have to say, um, I'm not convinced. Uh, I see a point and I see a use case. I'm not sure whether it carries its own weight, particularly without more literals, without string literals and other kind of stuff. And my gut feeling right now is maybe we, because we, we don't, we don't really need this, I would say. Um, there's not that, that what well, the use case is there is not often enough, um, to make, to be, um, to be, to be, make it important enough to add methods based on that. I would then maybe wait for the literals to be out before adding these methods. 
But hey, maybe that's just me. Okay. That covers transform, I think. Should we tell Stuart that we figured it out? Did we do something? Uh, you know, we can just like, I think we figured it out. Uh, 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 Dustin Marks did it for us. Bam. You know what Dustin does here? I'm, I'm, of, I'm long of the opinion that we basically need a service like this. Someone needs to get paid for this. Someone needs to be in charge of uh, going through all the, 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 mail, the mailing lists on the JDK and just doing stuff like this. Like just, you know, find something, like not, not, not send you a summary of what happened this day. I don't care about what happened today. Well, sometimes I do, but mostly I don't. Mostly I want to, have what happened to, uh, want to know what happened to one topic. What happened to string transform? Where did it come from, right? So I think that collecting messages and, and, and putting them together in an easily readable format, um, that would provide high value. Uh, and I'm sure that people would read it, but you know, the point is like, it's also a lot of work. And uh, I think there are not that many people interested in that. So I guess as a regular run-of-the-mill blogger, like Dustin is and like I am, it's, it's just a matter of passion. It's not really something that will work out well for you. I'm sure that um, his hits on this specific topic are not that high. Although, you know, if JDK comes out with transform and people don't know what it's used for in Google, then they might end up here and then this might end up collecting some traffic. But uh, from a business point of view, I don't think this post makes a lot of sense. Which doesn't, which doesn't mean it should not get posted. It just means that it's unlikely that it will get posts like this will get uh, be, be written as continuously as they would be useful. So yeah, that, that would be great. Like if somebody, uh, I don't know, if Oracle only had developer advocates for Java, that would be awesome. You know, they should look into, I, I, can, I can give them a couple of names. I know some people that would do that rather nicely. Um, right, so they could do this. I mean, they didn't in the past, I think. Uh, but that would be great if we would get this information like this regularly. Um, because Stuart Marks, like, you know, he covers his image free time. He does that for the stuff that he cares about, which is cl quite closely aligned to the stuff that I care about. So that's cool. But... You know, like this could happen as well for, I don't know, Project Loom, just pick one thing or whatever. So I think that there's, there's some, there's a gap here that could be filled. Oh, I'm saying. Okay. Um, did it get, yeah, okay, it got tweet. Oh, I didn't show you that. Um, I just wrote, let me quickly show you. I just wrote this to uh, just your marks. Okay, let's go back. Let's see what else do we have in our magic list. The magic list says more methods on string. Okay, right. So let's have a look at more methods on string. Uh, let's get rid of these compilers. Bam. Don't need this anymore. Doesn't work anyway. And now we go back to string. Java string. Since 12, describe constable. We discussed, we're not going to look into that. We saw that, that was it. And then transform and the consti thing. Condi, consti, whatever. You know what I mean. Actually, I thought there would be more promise here. Um, <laughs> I thought there would be more promise. That doesn't make sense. Um, I, I thought there would be more stuff here to look at. So. What I keep here is on string, let's format this properly now, we have and then to add remove indentation and uh, what I also said that um, having to provide Uh, let's say uh, it would be nice if we could just provide the f the target indentation I want to get, but that's not the case, right? Um, having to write change in indentation. Let me wrap that. 
um, instead of target indentation, makes it fragile. Hard to use and fragile. Usually I'm, not, usually I'm not negative about the changes in JDK, right? Usually I'm always all hyped. Uh, so, so far I didn't find anything that gives me hype. Well, maybe the, the, the fact that we get switch expression should suffice. Transform to, um, yeah, map basically to, to apply a function, to apply a function to the string um, used at the end of literals um, maybe wait with release until multi line until well the multi line string literals are released okay that was that okay that was not very successful we did look at this it was boring even this that was long, new method on string, we have those. Files mismatch. What does files mismatch do? Files. Mismatch. A file that returns the position of the first mismatch byte in the content of two files. Ooh. The position will be in the inclusive range of zero up to the size of the smaller file. Two files are considered to match if they satisfy one of the following conditions the two paths locate the same file okay that makes sense even if two uh, even if two equal paths okay. ah okay so we don't get a mismatch if we use the same path even though the file does not exist the two files are the same size and every byte in the first file is identical to the corresponding byte in the second file okay that makes sense okay so um that's fairly straightforward. There are two files, let's say two text files. I give you two paths. Do they match or not? It's a bit weird that it's called mismatch, so that's the negative. Most of them are more like, like, is same file, I'm more the positive. I would expect, like, is same file, maybe has same content or match or something. Yeah, but other than that, okay. That's not overly exciting. E files dot mismatch compares to files and return compares to files content and report whether they're equal byte by byte. That was that. Compact number format. Okay, that didn't work. All oh, right, it wasn't in a it wasn't in a class, right? Um, that was an inner class, right? Right, right, right. Um, Yes, with diff. No, it's not. Java text, compact number format. How can I find it? Okay, number format gotta get. Oh, yeah, right. It could be been removed again, right? Number format. Library source does not match the byte code. There it is. See, compact number format. I wanna see. Come on, man. Something IntelliJ is off, so somehow, I mean, the library source, um, oh, you can't really see that, right? let me, let me pull that into, let me show you all of that, there you go. So it says up here, library source does not match the bytecode for the not class number format. Uh, it makes sense because this one obviously is the one that references number format, but it's not here, but how can that be? Does it have to re-index the... I changed that under the hood. Maybe it has to re-index that. Can I do that somehow? So what I do, um, in, in IntelliJ, I import... Do you see this, by the way? No, I'm in the settings. 
IntelliJ I um, set my path up JDK12, for example, I import it as 12. And then what I do secretly on disk is I just point the symbol to another version. So that would mean that maybe IntelliJ doesn't get that the JDK12 that it thought was, is there is replaced by another one, by a newer one, and then doesn't re-index. But I just change it twice, and both times we get a short progress bar. So I would guess that it did now, up, it did now index a new file. Library source doesn't mention it. I'm, I'm not willing to really go into this now. I don't want to, because I think this is going to be some stupid thing that I did wrong. It's going to spend, we're going to spend a lot of time um, finding some boring result. You know what? I, I, I'll, I'll, <laughs> file mismatch extends errors mismatches. Uh, so the first is file mismatch extends error mismatches in, uh, introduced in Java 9. Uh, by conceptually, that's, that's, I think that's rather true, right? Mismatches does the same. It looks whether the array has this different length or whether one of them has different length. If needed, file invariant. Whoa, invariant caches, are you crazy? No, 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 that takes way too long. Um, I'm not sure if that's the caching thing. Uh, you know what? I'll delegate this to the chat. Uh, you are you are clever. Find the JDK, find the JD, uh, JDK twelve Java doc, which should be online already, and find the class in there. The class we're looking for is compact number format. I'll post into the chat, and then come back with a link, and we're going to look at that there. Uh, I'm sure we can can see what it's used for there. So that's still up in the air. I still want to look at that. So I'll keep it here. Number format style. Now, I'm not willing to poke into number format anymore. Actually, I'm not willing to poke anywhere because this is annoying. Um, a number format style. A style is an inner which represents the style for formatting a number within a given number format instance. <laughs> okay, I would have gotten that much on my own. Um, what's the difference, though? What's a short formatting of a number? What's a long? I mean, maybe that's. Uh, for example, double, double is usually formatted as with a dot, no, and dot O, like dot zero, when it's just a, even, uh, just a full number, but that, that should not be governed by this. Format style. Yeah, nah, not care about, I care nothing about number formats to track this down. Ah, see, this is how this goes. Don't care. If it's awesome, someone will write, someone will write a book about it. Yeah, complete the future. I want to see that. Let's have a look at that. Although I'm thinking about taking a short break. Um, gonna make a tea. Gonna make take a big crack uh, bathroom break. Oh, I didn't create like I need a I'll be back screen. Like you know, I keep the stream running, but there should be something saying that I'll be back. Wait, I can do that. Let me do that. Okay, so Surfer writes uh, that with the short number format, you can format 1,000 as 1K and 1 million as 1M in the ENUS locale. Neat. That's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not, I didn't have a lot of use cases for that yet, but you know that's common online specifically. If you write a text, you want to say, you know, I got 5.K, uh, sorry, 5.2K followers instead of writing the number of followers out. That's interesting. This is fun doing this with you together. Like usually I have to figure all of this on my own. This is so much faster. Okay, so um, I put an I'll be back soon message here. And we'll leave you alone. And what what's the time say? The time says it's one forty eight. So give me like I don't know, five minutes? Five minutes, I'll be back. Uh, you might see me running around in the background. I'm going to make a cup of tea. Stay awake. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break. See you guys. See you soon. Oh.
And we're back. I decided against making a tea. If I drink a green tea now, it keeps me awake all night. Which is half the goal, but I want to go to bed eventually. For a future topic, source version. Yeah, that's coming up, right? Um, let's have a look at complete the future. Everybody out there, like all the three people, um, I'm short to, I'm, I'm thinking about, uh, let's see, I can have a look at my, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see how many people there are, I guess they're like, in the chat there are two, so <laughs> I'm not sure whether, whether I can expect that there are many more at all, uh, dashboard, I don't even know, like I, I, I've not, never done this, three viewers, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a little sad, but there we are. Well, at least, like, as I said earlier, three is a party. Or two is a party? Anyway, so it doesn't matter how many people there are. It matters whether it makes fun. It makes, it does, it, it's a lot of fun. Like, first of all, it's fun, but also it's much more efficient than I would do this myself. Because every time you help me, it would have taken me somewhere between five minutes and an hour to figure that out myself. One more, hey! Jaime Oak. Like, how the hell do I say that? Njai Mio? Njai Mio? Can't just pick like four characters and just read those four characters? Um, yeah, okay. Ooh, you see my dashboard here. <laughs> Are there any secret information here that you shouldn't know? Uh, I guess not. Um, CPU is as normal and stream health is normal. So I just assume I just close this again. There's the chat. Okay. So, ah, <laughs> I really shouldn't put the beer next to the fan outlet of the, of the, um, uh, of the laptop. So, what have we done so far? Um, basically, we discussed which, which uh, repository I'm using, only, only, although it didn't play a big role here. We have to download JDK 12. If you want anybody, you can include that in your. Uh, you can import it into IntelliJ or Eclipse, as a project, and then make it work with JDK 12. Then you can start experimenting with it. Uh, then we looked at the RP diff that Gunnar Morling created for um, JDK 11, JDK 12. Scrolled through the entire thing and picked out what looked interesting. We also looked at the JDK 12 list of jabs and categorized them and looked at which of those are interesting. And then we came up with this list here. And I'm working slowly through the, slowly through the list. We're up to complete the future, uh, and I'm really, really curious um, what this one, what this one has to teach us. This new thing here. Can I not? Put nothing. Complete the future. There we are. Oh, come on. This is the same thing. I don't see the new methods. Okay, this gets, this gets seriously annoying. Mm. Mm. So the point is, I, if, I, if, I, if I search for since 12, I don't find anything. Um, and the new methods, I mean, they could be gone, but it's much, much more likely that this is due to the fact that uh, somehow this seems to, seem to be something like a, like a mismatch between the JDK version I think I'm running and the one that I'm actually, actually running. Uh, the future, exceptionally async, that's what the method is called, exceptionally async. It's here. Oh, it just doesn't have Java though. Ah, because it inherits it, I guess. Okay, um, then we look at the interface above. Yeah, there we go. Okay, except, exceptional asset. So there are exceptional asset, sorry, there are a couple of those. Um, this one, for example, takes, so yeah, this is one of the overloads that always exists. This one just takes a function and does something. We're gonna look at what it does in a second. But then there's a second implementation that also takes an executor. What that means is this one says, um, you know, do this thing, whatever this thing exactly is, do this thing asynchronously, meaning as a separate task and, and committed to the default fork joyful. 
And this means do the same thing logically, but then commit the task to this, uh, this executor. Then we have executional compose, and I guess another version of this. Compose async. Yeah, so this is, once again, another difference. This is this method, exceptionally compose, makes no guarantees about which thread it's executed in. Could be in a thread pool, but could also be in the current thread, for example. So this could actually be executed as a blocking operation. This one guarantees that it goes into a, uh, into a background thread, and then there's another overload where, where you can give the executor, right, as expected. And that's it, I guess. Those are the new ones. Okay, let's have a look at what, what exceptionally access does. So, um, how is the general knowledge about computer future and how it works? Quick poll. Uh, on a scale from one, no idea, to four, uh, total, uh, uh, lead skill, um, how much do you know about completable future? There we go. So just so I know what, how much I have to explain. I mean, we can go have a quick look at what exception, how it how, um, works. Touch it once or twice. That's not on the scale from one to four, so I don't write this as a joke. I mean, how can I like touch it once or twice? How can I put this, how can I put an average out of that? <laughs> One-ish. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, it makes sense to look into this. A um, lot of ones. Okay, um, that's fair. I didn't use it in practice a whole lot either. Um, but yeah, so we can use that to learn something new. That's good. Let's see. I'm too lazy to explain this myself. I'll just pull up. I'll just pull up the... Which one is it though? I think Java 8. Uh, that didn't work. That worked. Java 8 from the ground up. Blah, 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 blah. Lambda expression. So that's a, that's a course idea for training. Um, and it explains all kinds of things like optional. And oh, by the way, if you ever use my slide text, you can press escape and you can get this awesome overview. Uh, and then you can. There we go, compute the future. It's explained as a, at the part of the explanation is as a monad. So uh, I'm just going to go into that. Okay, so let's, let's have a quick compute the future thing. Let's, let's dedicate five minutes to it. So, um, okay, so the idea basically is uh, you want to do you want to do stuff asynchronously. You have a task that you want to do, but you don't want to do it here and now in this thread by blocking. Uh, you want to do it somewhere else. So uh, there are a couple of steps. The first one is, you know, start doing this. You can just take a supplier of T, which means um, something that creates a result, and call completefuture.supplyasync, which means do this thing asynchronously, uh, and then you get back completefuture of T, of that result type. Then you can attach further steps. You can say then apply, which means once you've computed T, please uh, apply this function that turns into U, that gives you completefuture of U back, and uh, you can say, okay, I have a function, or I have a method maybe that takes a T, but it gives you back, it gives already returns a completely future of you. So then, then compose accepts such a method. And then accept just takes a consumer for the result. Uh, this is like, I think this comes up later when I compare this to other monads. This is just like optional. Supply assume is like off or off nullable, I guess. Um, right? So will you take something, some, in this case, a supplier for completely future, or in the, in the case of optional, and you take concrete value, and you basically lift that up into that context of the optional. It could be there, it could not be there, and complete the future of the context of it will be there at some point in the future. And then optional, you would call map and flat map. And on complete the future, you can call then apply and then compose. These are exactly the same mechanism. They do exactly the same thing, just in different contexts. In optional, that means if I call map, then you know it takes a present value and computes something with it. And then, then apply means it takes a value once it is computed and computes something new, which might take some time as well. Um, so then apply is like map, then compose like flat map, then accept is like string for each or like um, optional if present. And then join, you can just wait for the computation to finish. So for example, uh, let's say you want to visit my blog, uh, you create a computer future, and supply asset means do the web request to that URL. So web request apparently returns a string. 
and then the, I mean the HTML of the, of the website and then you say then apply and then I create this new web page URL object here. So what I get back is a completable future for that web page and if I run this code without this line then it would just you know it would just public static void main would just call this method it would just run and immediately quit the JVM because this happens in the background that, that will not keep the JVM alive. Um, so what you will do more often do eventually either you can asynchronously type the result somewhere else or otherwise that you will at some point usually have to call join. Okay, that's fairly easy, right? Um, then we have a couple of other examples that don't go into them. Uh, so the basic idea is to use supply asset to start the asynchronous computation and would then apply, then compose, and then accept. Uh, you attach additional computations and would join you wait for the result. We're going to skip the monad, we're going to skip the terminology. Um, and then there are a bunch of things you can do with that. Uh, you can extract the result. If you want to get the result, you can call get, then you get it out, but it blocks. You can say wait at most 10 seconds, then it blocks, but at most 10 seconds. Join. Uh, I forgot what the difference between get and join at the moment. I'm sure there is one. Ah, oh, no, wait, that could be because it implements completion stage and future, so this might actually be the same logically. I'm not sure. Get now is nice. Um, it returns immediately. Um, and if, if, it, if there is no value, we'll return the value that you give it here, the default value. Oh, see, it's not necessarily the end okay. Yeah, then you can add error handling in there, which I think this touches on. So the idea here is that each step in this chain can, of course, cause, a, or cause an exception, right? Let's say one of the things you want to do asynchronously as a request to a database, that might fail. Uh, well, how do you recover from that? Well, you can just call a method called exceptionally, for example, and uh, if you call that, you give it a function that accepts the, uh, the exception and return, tries to return back a result. Can we see an example? Yes, we can. Load a user with this ID, then load its history, and then create recommendations. If any, well, this step apparently already returns a computable future. So this computation, load the user, this one can fail, or this one can fail, or this one can fail, all of them can fail. And exceptionally says, okay, give me the exception that was accrued at this point, the create recommendations thing, like all the exceptions that came up to this point. No, let me start over. Only one exception will, of course, happen. If load user ID throws an exception, then, then compose does nothing, and then compose does nothing. It just gives, passes the exception all the way on until we hit exceptionally. In this case, what I do is I take the exception and log a warning, but then I create default recommendations. So there will always be recommendations, even if any of these steps fail. In the end, I will take these recommendations and respond to them. And where I put exceptionally here, of course, makes a difference. I can put one, I can, maybe there's a default user history, so I can put it one line above the one that I do it now. That's how error handling works. You can time out if you want to. Uh, you can fork computations trivially. Uh, forking just means like you have this computable future and then you attach this one, but you also attach this computation. So you can basically have a couple steps and then you say, okay, I want to attach that, and I want to attach that, and that is not a problem at all. Yeah, that can also be comp combined, so you can basically say, I got this two or three parallel things, so maybe I have to make uh, three calls to three other REST APIs, but I can make all of them at the same time because I don't rely on each other's results. You can basically create, create three, completable, three completable futures with all the three results, and then you can use this methods, these methods to wait for them to be done. Um, this is what I said earlier, and <laughs> it doesn't fit on the... Um, and reducing this, changing the size doesn't help either. Uh, what, can I, can I save, save this somehow? No, I can't. We just have to accept that it's the way it is. Uh, so the table is partial here. Um, so basically what in stream is called map is called then apply, but you can also apply to both, to, sorry, to two computer futures or to one of two. And so there are very many variants here. Lag man, is it the lag man? This looks like JavaScript promises. Um, yeah, uh, I didn't use promises much. No, actually, I did. <laughs> that's weird. I don't know much about them, but I did. But I did use them. And yes, I would guess that's true. So, Zamora, so tell me whether the lag is still is still there. And on my end, it looks not, it looks fine. I'm not. Is something online? You know what? I take the mobile offline. How? Oh, this is so fragile, basically. As soon as something goes online, the stream drops, apparently. 
Okay, so now let's see where the new methods fit in. Let's see, let's see, let's, let's see. Oh yeah, for you to see, we have to go back. Go. The chat lag is there. Ah, I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, the chat lag. The chat lag. I got chat lag. Um, I'm totally chat lag. Yeah, anyway, so exceptionally async. Returns a new completion stage. Just if you read completion stage, mentally just uh, think completable future is basically the same. That when at this when this stage, so this stage is the stage you call this on, right? When the stage you call this on completes exceptionally means um, some computation that it contained to an exception. What returns a new stage that when this state completely is executed with this stage's exception as the argument to the supplied function. Okay, that makes sense. Using this stage, okay, we can ignore this. Um, this just means, you know, where it is executed. Technically, it means this. So, if I call this, if I call this on a completion state, or if, sorry, if I call this on a completable future, which completes but it completes normally like it has a normal result and this method just does nothing when i call it on completion on, on, on a future that throws an exception so the computation within the future throws an exception then the exception is passed to this function and then we get that back out so the weird part about that is that i'm pretty sure i'm really sure that I just claimed we already have this method. <laughs> um, isn't this the same as exceptionally? Oh, right, it's just asynchronous. Oh, apparently there was no exceptionally, no asynchronous overload for this. Well, it's not an overload because it has a different name. Um, yeah, so exceptionally exists since forever. Okay, so just this just adds the capability to say, I want to recover from this exception in a different thread because this one happens in the um, can happen in the same thread and this one will always happen in the background thread and then there's another overload exceptionally async that uh, you can give an executor as I said earlier means the same as the one before this one just says do it please in that, in that executor, uh, with that executor over there oh this beer is really like it's like 40 degrees warm that's the tea I didn't make <laughs> Exceptionally compose returns. But well, there's the dream is real, man. There's more beer. Cheers. I'm going to make my last one though. Um, I already had one in the cinema. I don't want to pass out on the stream. And yeah, I'm old. Like three beers and not not enough sleep. Totally enough to pass me out. So returns uh, a new compose. Uh, returns a new future that when this stage completes exceptionally is composed using the result of the supplied function applied to the stage exception oh this is just like this is just the flat map variant right so the difference between exceptionally and exceptionally composed is this function signature this one takes a function that already produces a completion stage just like with flat map, sometimes you just have functions that already return an optional or re already return a stream. So, you know, you can't map. You have to get rid of this, you know, this nested stream of streams, so optional of optional. And that's the same thing here. So when you understood what exceptionally does, what I explained earlier, then you really, there isn't much new, th new there isn't much new here. Uh, exceptionally async says do that in a separate thread and I can give you the executor to do it in. And this one just means, okay, in case I have a function that already returns a future, still, I want to um, um, I want to still call that function to exceptionally to, to, to recover from that error. And then we have the async variant here, and then the one with the executor service here. So this is really just, as I said, it really fills just holes in this matrix of, of, of possibilities here. So that's not, uh, not something too special. Okay, um, let's go back to the notes. Ah, okay, leg was started at the, yeah, sorry, like, yeah, I was too, 
I have, to, I have to calm down apparently. <laughs> Cheers, thank you. Hope I'm not the only one out there. Okay, so computer future. Um, adds methods that allow more varied handling of error recovery. Recovery. Usually I use Atom, by the way, but Atom has a weird, weird behavior recently on my machine where uh, it basically just shuts down most of its functionalities. You can still type into the editor window, uh, but you can't save, which is not bad because when you reopen it, it still keeps state. Uh, but you can't save, you can't click on files to, clo to open them. It's just weird. Something, I mean, it's not Atom's fault per se. I'm sure something on the machine is wrong. It misbehaves. For a couple of weeks now, it's in slight, first of all, in, in uh, erratic different ways, but I now feel like most of them are somehow related to rendering. So, for example, Chrome freezes. So, I'm afraid. Um, um, so, I think something's wrong with, like, something with the rendering pipeline leads to some applications to shut down. Oh! You guess what? Atom is also based on um, what's it called? The thing under the the the, 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 the app framework is based on Chrome. E ele electron, electron, right? Atom is based on electron. So maybe electron is screwy. Ah, never mind. So that's why I use Visual Studio. That's all I want to say. Slight digression here. For the future, adds methods that allow more. Okay, yeah. So uh, we added exceptionally so um no do we type them out yeah no we, we copy paste them of course typing is for losers uh, there you go exceptionally asking to oops yeah. to recover uh, uh okay uh, that's totally wrong. Asynchronously, uh, that could be right. Asynchronously, and then exceptionally, as uh, exceptionally compose, right? And its variants compose recover with a function that returns. I'm just gonna write computer future. Screw the whole completion stage thing. That's just. I know it makes sense that it's there and there are reasons to just use the interface occasionally but in general I just focus on the type maybe I'm wrong there but that's just that's just what I do here um okay that was computer future collectors teeing that could be promising let's have a look at collectors teeing maybe we can actually write some code because that was kind of a goal right I want to write code here teeing Nah. It's, no, it's ah. Well, yeah, I think we can write code. So it returns a collector. There's a composite of two downstream collectors, as you can see here. You pass in two other collectors, and then I guess because there's a merger function here, it turns R1 and R2 into an R, and then you get a collector of R back, basically, which means on the screen you get an R back. Yeah, let's write code, finally. Come on. Come on, I can do it. I've written code before once or twice, I can do it. And uh, the D D D Java API string. Oh, now we're gonna go API stream T Nope. No! Ah, I accidentally added it to Git. No, I don't like that. This is so annoying. You add a new class, it asks, do you want to add it? You can say yes, and you can say no. If you say yes, and you put a, a, a check mark, and don't ask me again, it will always add them. In the past, if you said no, and said never ask me again, it would never ask you again. It would just silently add them in the future. <laughs> so that's weird. Okay, stream of, yes, this one, stream of, a, come on, now we have, we have something interesting to work with here. B, C, what do we collect? We could collect to a set, so maybe we could have another C here. 
and then we want to collect and now we say collectors team and now we go all crazy uh, we say one of the collectors is to set of course usually I would um, add um, I would add static imports but not just yet just to see how this works so now it's interesting how do I get a list and a set together in any meaningful way I mean this doesn't make sense of course right usually you will have um, what kind of things could you would you do here what would be interesting yeah you could oh you know what let's, let's do something that's not quite that arbitrary let's say we have a private static uh, class range uh, which has private final and min no we no no we got a range of whatever t min and max now IntelliJ do your magic oh I'm so looking forward to records man like when we can just generate this this will be awesome e yes constructor do that oh oh and also always always fight fight the good fight against no, now down with now now must die always and everywhere okay um this really lends itself to be a to, to be a, to get a factory method of okay mm, 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 mm. what do we need usually we need getters getters equals a hash code to string. I mean, I'm even too lazy to generate that right now. Let's keep it like that. Okay, great. So uh, we have this, and then because I think there's isn't there, aren't there like min max collectors, collectors max by awesome. Okay. Uh, yes, I want to get the well. I first want to get the min by actually. Um, min one by. Collectors min by and now we have to put in a comparator. Now, how did that work? There's comparator dot natural, right? Was that the comparator dot natural order? Awesome. Okay, let's start with static imports. Natural order. Min by. Put that here. Min by. Now we also go probably go max by. And I think you can see where I'm going with this because now we can, as a merger, what the hell? Import sitting like that. Yeah. Because now we can, as, as a merger, we can have something that takes a min and a max. Actually, we can, don't even have to do it like this. We can just call range off. And now we get tons of compilers. Collect. I would expect a range of string here. Compiler is not happy. Supplier accumulator. Oh yeah, sure. It's not collect. Uh, we have, sorry, I forgot the T in call. That kind of makes kind of it's kind of important to put T in around this. Still doesn't work. God damn it. Oh, min and max return optionals? True. Could be empty, right? Could be the empty stream. Uh, what do we do here? What do we do? What do we do? Sure. Um, we just like if it's empty, it's the range from the empty string to the empty string, right? But you know what? We're just going to claim it's like that. So we're just going to have min by natural order. Oh, that. Wait, no, that should work. Should we be able to call or else on this? Why can't I? Or else now? What am I doing wrong? Huh? Min by return. Oh, min by returns a collector, and then the collector. Right. Okay. So the problem is. Min by returns a collector, not a concrete result, of course. That makes sense, right? Because when you call min by here, you don't have the result of stream yet. So min by returns a collector that will eventually return optional. And then t 
seeing is passing this option and this option into range and off, but range and off doesn't, well, it could accept optionals. So if I go with a range of optional of string, then that should compile. Doesn't though. Maybe we can, I don't want this, but maybe we can try this first. So let me check whether you can even see the overlay. Oh, I didn't go back to code. Evil. Not evil. Stupid. What do you do, Pansy? No! I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh man, uh, you're so you're so cool that you're still around. Shit, I totally lost you there, right? I, yeah, I'm too deep in, definitely too deep in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Uh, so let me catch you up. Um, I'm so sorry. So what, I, what my goal was here, uh, I want to try the team thing, of course. And at first I thought I was just going to you know, play around, just give you um, something stupid like, let's collect to a list and collect to a set and let's collect that then. But that's boring. So now I realize, hey, wait, we can do something interesting. We can create a range uh, which takes a min and a max. And then we can find the minimum value in the stream and the maximum value in the stream. And then we can turn that into, into the into a range, right? Because that's kind of like a useful way to combine two existing collectors into a separate, into a new collector. Um, so that kind of makes sense, I think. Um, yeah. Can see a screen by the reverse. <laughs> like, it... I'm, I'm... This is not a good comment, man. <laughs> the nose. Um, yeah, it's true though. I'm starting to sweat a little. Okay, so uh, let's get back to this. See, I would, I would be awesome if I could see just, if I have an always on top uh, chat. That would be so great. At home I have two screens, of course. So like, much of many of these problems disappear. Okay, so I still don't quite get why this doesn't work. So teeing this one returns, this is a collector for option of string. The merger is somehow wrong. Why is the merger wrong? What if I could just put in now here? Yeah, of course now. Yeah, no, that's not good. What should this be? This should be something that takes to, oh. Exact something that is super of optional of string? But wait, if it's super, then it's every then it's anything. Huh? How does this make sense? So then object should work here, at least. Come on, let's let's make something compile, even if it's useless. No. I I'm not I don't get it. By function. Okay, let's let's see the exile helping you again. Um, collector that yeah okay what if I just say I want to take min max maybe go back to the method reference later and just return I don't know now Still doesn't work. I mean, come on, this must work somehow. There must be some way to make this compile. I'm clearly doing something absolutely wrong. Oh, yeah, like in this case. Still don't know what the, what the actual fuck. Like, how can... So, people, I'm taking... Uh, I need help. Can you help me? Keen. I'm going to take the string, collector of uh, the string junction, of the string junction, sorry, two, I mean, and then return, and then the buy function, then the takes two optionals, the takes two optional, and in this case, we change some, return some object. Maybe we can we pull this out into a variable, then we can see more of the more of the, of the involved generic.
still not working. Holy, like I'm just, I think I'm misunderstanding something. This should be fairly, fairly okay. Min by, well, if you, well, you you really, you really talk to when you can make fun of my nose. But now that it's your hope, you're all silent. Come on, help me. And so can you see, can you see the overlay? Can you see the compiler overlay? Yeah, you can. Okay, that's awesome. Oh, there you go. Somebody wrote something. Range one four function Java. Range one four function Java to make two. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I can't follow. Oh, never mind. Teeing is that cannot be by expected parameters, actual parameters. Oh, maybe natural order is too. Could natural order be a problem here? But no, I can't think. I don't think so. Um, as one as two. Ooh, wait, is string comparable? It is comparable, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. S1 compared to S2. Oh, come on, seriously? That's that's all that was wrong? I guess it, like there were too little uh, type information to understand what exactly I was going for. So if I could just, does it work here? Yeah, I thought so. But if I do this right, then it should work. Uh, oh, sorry, it's from that because it's um, comparator. Oh, interesting, that doesn't work. Yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, um, considering give up on this. This works. This is weird. Okay, now, but now maybe we can start. Um, make this work the way we actually intended this to be. Okay, this works now. Method reference should work as well. Oh really, the only thing was, okay, I think that, I guess that there's not enough type information for the compiler to infer everything. And with the first min by it can. Okay, now something, this, this at least, oh, and we don't have to have it to be object. <laughs> okay, this doesn't work either. Range, whatever. Now I do need a. Now I do need a two string. There you go. Because now we can simply. Oh, put that. Oh. Range. Look at that. Worked like a like like a charm. Okay, neat. Again, yeah, in this specific case, the options are, of course, kind of annoying. Uh, what you would like to do... <clears throat> what you could do here is basically lift the option out of the range. And you could have a method like... Um, of Of optional, then you go optional of t here, and then you return an optional of a range of t. Oh, and then you know you do some ifs or maps or whatever. So if both of them are present, then you return if min dot is present. And max dot is present. Then we return this. Ah, this is an interesting topic. Get is deprecated, right? Is it already deprecated? Not yet. Yeah, but there's a plan to deprecate get, get because there we now have or else row. You know what? I don't. I don't like it. Well, maybe I don't like it. It's too strong, but. Look, 
First of all, I thought I'd always use OS throw. OS throw is exactly the same as get. It just has a better name. And the idea behind a better name is that get just makes it way too easy to just call it. You just don't check, just we are Java developers. If there's a get, we call it. And I absolutely buy that argument. It, it's a good argument. Um, it may be a little late now, but even then, it, it, it's a good argument. My problem is, if is present or else throw, it just reads like that, that doesn't read well. Like if is present get, that makes a whole lot of sense. But yeah, um, oh cool, we can use this empties now. What I usually like to do is to kill, uh, to, to, to handle the payload case first. Well, payload case, but the exceptional case, let's put it like that. And then have, I wouldn't use an else here in this case, because these are not equal paths from my point of view. This is a special path and this is a regular path. So with this, we can lift the optional out of this. Uh, we can say this is a range of optional. Ooh. So this does not work because. Uh, and we want to get back a range of. Oh yeah, right, because now we get optional back out here. This is of course a stupid oh, um, message, right? I just use it because up there we are, after all, generating a non-empty stream. Like if this would be empty, like this wouldn't this wouldn't make sense. Um, okay, so this works as well now. I'm still kind of annoyed at this and would like to make this work properly, uh, but I'm not sure how exactly. Can I still? Yeah, I think now I got it. Not nice, but it should work. This because this would be comparable of string actually, and not just string. And then natural order. What? Oh. Ah. There we go. This should work now. Oh, for crying out loud! Uh. Stay compared or compared. Okay, give up. Like some, there's a way to make this work. It's just not meant for me. Movie alert! Hey, one example from a blog for teeing. Stream off one to six. Then collect summing the doubles uh, and counting, and then yeah. No, natural order is, oh. Like this doesn't leave me alone now, like I can, I can uh, T extends comparable, T extends comparable of question mark super T. No, this is string, T is a string here. Return to compatible string. This should be string, and if it's not string, I don't get it. Anyway, um, I was thinking collectors. Yes, you were. Uh, so yeah, back to this. Yeah, this is a good example. Um, basically, the idea is, uh, I think, often that you have a result that consists of two properties of the input, right? Here we want to have the minimum and the maximum. Um, the result that uh, Twitch guns I gave, hi, by the way, thanks for joining us, um, is I want to make the sum and account. Or like you can think you can have all kinds of things. Uh, so basically, yeah, you want to collect two properties of the input, and then you want to somehow put them out. And the interesting thing here is, uh, you in many many cases, I would guess, you want to collect them in some kind of dare I say it, a pair or a tuple, right? It's like you have you have a sum and account. You have to put that together somehow because you need a specific single result. Um, Thanks to VAR, you can do some ugly tricks here. But we don't want to do that, right? We don't want to have ugly tricks. We want to do this properly. <laughs> Maybe I can just go, make my phones go away and just type VAR here. That would be funny. <laughs> no, I can't. And I shouldn't. Even if I could, I shouldn't. Um, okay, so teeing. Yeah, teeing is good. 
I think I like it. I think I like it. So now, now I'm gonna do a risk, make a risky decision and go back to this view, type stuff in here, and I hope I remember to get back. Collector steering um, allows um, having a collector with two collectors and then merging the results. For example, um, to find min, max, or sum, and count. Yeah, definitely. Source version. If I remember correctly, then Samura twittered, Zona Twitter chatted, whatever, added source version explanation. Let's see what it says. Plus the hierarchies of packages used to model Java languages. Oh, that's just a package. Uh, okay, maybe we need to read that as well. I think there's a reason why I posted this. A source version feature number is name. That's a good entry point. Oh, wow. If, it, if that's indeed the case, <laughs> then there should be a... That's highly specific. There should be a better way to get there. You know, yes, yes. Uh, feature number. What? Are we looking at the same? Oh, yeah, feature number. I mean, that's a placeholder, right? Now I get it, sorry. And this version, and then its name returns whether or not the name is a syntactically valid qualified name in the latest source version. Unlike this identifier, this method um, this method returns false for keywords wooden literals and other things this method returns true for restricted keywords and var okay I guess this is some kind of internal thing then to check like if you compile against I think the JDM, uh, sorry, the compiler would need to know this kind of information if you compile against, um, let's say, with JDK 12 against JDK 9 or something. I mean, yeah, so because if the language evolves a lot, then it's much more important to be able to check, like, hey, well, wait, what, when did was a bar a keyword? Well, it's not a keyword, but when was, I don't know, like, value, if it ever comes a keyword. If or not, name is technically Unlike Okay. Um, let, I still want to read the package comment, but I think other than that, I'm done with it. Classes and hierarchies of packages used to model the la Java language programming um, language. The members of this package and its sub-packages are for use in language modeling and language processing tests in API, APIs, including, but not limited to, the annotation processing framework. That was close. Like, at least it's somewhat connected to compilation. Source version of the Java programming language, see the appropriate edition of blah, for information about particular source version. Hmm. Well, it says it existed since 1.6. What's the new part here? Didn't we find something new? Oh, right. It got the field release 12. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we're going to see that for each new release. Um, probably I've already saw it in the past. The new field here. Yeah, man. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, but I think it's not really mention worthy. I'm just going to. Um, Gonna skip that. Okay. So as I said, I'm not gonna look at the constants. We can look at the archive. I'm not gonna look at the garbage collectors. So quick poll: um, switch expressions and default CDS archives. Who wants to see what? Or should we just end this while we're ahead? Holy shit! This is almost three hours. I think we're gonna end this. Unless everybody screams, no, 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 I want to do X or I want to do Y. I think I'm going to let you go now. Um, I'll give you a second to type that out. I'm going to check my phone. There's so, like tons of messages just, oh, I turned off the Wi-Fi. I can't check now. Um, oh, okay. you know what you think, whether you want to see any more content, I can introduce you to one of my little buddies here. That's the only one I have here with me. Say something for the next time. I'm off now too. Okay. Um, look. 
you know, my, all my, at home, my entire uh, desk, well, not entire desk, but parts of my desk are full with these small figures, not these specifically, just like, you know, whatever. Whatever is a small figure like this. I collect them when I'm traveling. I kind of like looking at them, right? So below my screen, there all the time. There's Batman there, like the Lego Batman. And um, yeah, the Joker is there as well. Joker is awesome. Uh, and other characters and things. And this one, uh, I got as a present here. I think it's, it's totally over it, overblown by the, by, the, uh, by the light. Okay, anyway, good. Save something for next time. Um, thank you very much for, for being here with me. That was awesome. That was a lot, a really cool first stream. I enjoyed it a lot. You helped out a lot. If you could keep doing this and you keep doing part of my work for me, that would be awesome. Um, if you have any topics to recommend, do that on Twitter. There should also be below this, uh, this video on, on Twitch and I'll also put it on YouTube if I upload the video there. Uh, there should be a link to Discord. I would, I would like to like, you know, start Discord with people who are interested in Java in specifically or software development in general. You know, just discuss these kind of things, uh, discuss um, new changes or, you know, whatever really that's related to the language. Um, so I'm going to post a, a link here very quickly and then I'm going to, oh, wait, you know what, I won't. It's somewhere down there. You will find it. And uh, thanks again for being with me. I appreciate it a, a lot. I appreciate you taking so much time out of your... Uh, I'm sure busy schedule. I hope you had a good time. Uh, and I'll see you around. Bye. Like this, right? Otherwise you cannot see. Like, oh, I need a catchphrase. Uh, mm. Ah, <laughs> so long.